All right, so I'm gonna share with you guys today the journey uh, of buying real estate. And on my way to work, I'm gonna share my experience with you guys. So I get this question a lot is like, Jimmy, where do I get started in real estate? Like I wanna buy right now. The interest rates are high right now. The market is um, tough finding listings. And uh, I'm gonna give you some tips. So there's three parts to it how I look at. One is finding a deal, two is finding the money, and three is understanding the cost of renovation, have a general contractor, three things. If you haven't done it, one of the best ways I like to do it is just take one of the three things down first. Don't try to do everything at once is an idea, or you could do all three. If you decide to do one of the three, what I would do is I would find the deal. If you find the deal, then you can send it to people like myself. They can tell you if it's a deal or not. And then if we buy it, we can renovate it. You can learn the process. You can be like the apprentice and then we have the capital. I really like that idea for some people who it's taken a while to get into the business of investing because they, they're analytical. They want to know everything. Um, you know, books, honestly, someone asked me like, what books? There's good real estate general books, but like getting started, there's books out there, but I truly believe on site is the best thing. Like book wise, I like real estate tax loopholes, tax advantages, real estate tax advantages, tax free wealth, wealth code, banker's code. Um, those aren't help me find the investment deal up front. So that's what I would do. Number one is I would uh, get really good at lead generation, find opportunities. All right, if you don't want to do that, then we can talk about all three. So let's talk about the first thing, lead generation. So finding the opportunity is the key. And how do you do that? It's door knocking, it's making phone calls. It is looking at expired listings. It is looking at for sale by owners. Um, it's direct mail. It could be a social media ad. I never really did well on the social media ads. I've done better on like posts and then someone give me a heads up. I've done well on wearing t-shirts out in general public and people give me a heads up about investment property. I've done well with people giving me referrals in the internal marketplace, you know, saying, hey, listen, this person's willing to sell. They don't want to put in a marketplace. House is a mess. Um, I've done okay on direct mail. Um, I have done door knocking we did well and phone calls we done okay so those are the different variables and what I would do is don't get caught up in like which one's the best one like do it all day every day so minimally my first tip over everything is you gotta be at least lead generating 15 hours a week 15 minimally street phones whatever it is minimally um, and if your business isn't busy, you should be doing at least 30 hours a week. What else is there to do if you don't have business coming in? So also another source I didn't bring up to you is calling Center of Influence, asking them if they know any houses in the neighborhood have been taken care of, anything like that. Um, and you know, you get heads up on that too. So the point is most people overcomplicate it. Don't overcomplicate it if you're analytical. And number one, get really good at lead generation, finding opportunities. Now, your next question to me will be, hey, Jeremy, what is a good opportunity? Well, that's why if you rely on someone that knows this, you don't have to worry about the second and third. Do your first two, three deals with someone. Learn the game. Just like life, what you normally do to become a doctor, you have to have um, the internal training process first. You just don't become a doctor and work on people. It's a big investment. I like that model. Personally, it's not what I did. I grabbed a Home Depot book. I figured out how to renovate homes. I worked nonstop. I worked from eight o'clock to about midnight for many, many years, four days a week. Friday nights I didn't work, and then Saturdays I worked. And that's how I got started, and that was in 2003. Um, some people will do that. You know, most, I believe, will not do that hustle. You know, won't work that many hours. They say they will, but you know, let's be frank, there's other things going on in their life where they just, you know, won't. Um, if you do decide to say, I want to find the deal myself, then you need to understand what deals are. And, you know, basically ballpark right now in the marketplace where I'm at is around $100 a foot to renovate the house, total gut. So if it's a 1,500 square foot house, my budget would probably be around 150 to renovate it. 
I remember I was renovating for 85 to 100,000 bucks, but it seems like those days are gone now. And uh, we're just gonna talk about renovations. We won't talk about new builds right now, so just renovations. And then there's different things you can study online to see what the costs are. Another thing you could do is you could pay a general contractor to walk a house with you. You could pay someone like me. We could pay us to show you and walk the house and the costs of renovating a house so you understand that cost, which I'm sure you could find someone to, to give up their time to do that. Um, and that's if you want to learn it on your own and do it on your own. So the first part is that finding the deal you know, people ask me analyzers. I've had a whole bunch of different ones. I personally don't have one particular one I really, really love. I normally have my buy costs, my renovation costs, and I look at my return. I normally want to be in something, you know, after I renovate it, it'd be worth 70 cents on the dollar. So meaning if it's worth 500, I want to be in for 350, somewhere in that range, 380, I want equity in it. Um, is normally mine. I renovate it. I put the sweat and equity. I put the time into it. Um, is what I like to be at. And some people would say 80%, whatever that number is. Just be careful above that rate, just because if the market switches, then you could be in trouble. Personally, I think people are buying Airbnb and houses are already done right now, and uh, they paid too much. And if the Airbnb market adjusts, do they can they cover the rent? If they do a long-term rental, I mean, it happened to me. I had a lot of money coming in on one rental and then all of a sudden it stopped and then I was losing money per month. And for me and my lifestyle, I just didn't want to deal with it. So I went to a long-term tenant and it was fine. So first thing is lead generation, getting really good at that. A ton of books on it, training in my office. We train it all the time. Someone wants to pay me for coaching and be a coaching client specifically for this, they can hire me for it and I will specifically work with them on a weekly basis to find an opportunity uh, to find deals and be an outside coach them. I would do that with some uh, people. So I, I do it. So I think it works very, very well. It's worth a return. Uh, that would be $13.50 a month uh, for one call session a week and if I need some extra on top of that, I will. Number two is is finding the contractor, and I've talked about this in many other you know forums. Is you know the ways I like to find it is number one is post on social media, ask anybody you've dealt with recently you like. Two, drive around sites and find contractors. You know, in Cape May or towns I drive, I introduce myself, meet people, see who's good, see who's not. Uh, another way is ask for referrals for people. I found that some GCs are more, you know, for just some changes to a house than compared to a total renovation. Um, I personally don't buy houses that are done normally as investments just because I know how to renovate houses. So I want to buy a property, renovate it, and get value out of it. That's just me personally. Um, you know, whatever sources that you think you can find is just you know, looking for a good general contractor. And yeah, it's hard right now. You know, it's a hard thing to do. It's another reason why I like referring it out and learning the process and already have a GC in this marketplace. Uh, third is um, the money. Um, the money side of it is, you know, personal money. You could have small banks. You know, you used to get some money from small banks in the 4% range. Now they're in a 6 7% range. Down 20% of the rehab, and then they will the rehab costs, and then they'll finance the rest. So that's one. And you can find another wealthy person's money, and they could lend you money and you do a mortgage and note on the house. Um, what else? You could do hard money. You know, hard money is the most expensive. I know one guy's around eight nine percent still. I think most people around ten to fifteen right now. and partner up, put no money up, do 50-50 return on the flipper rental. I find most of them on the wealthy side of that, they want the money back on the flip, but hey, we could find the right people who want the rental partner, okay, doing that, you guys split the return. If the number's great enough, why wouldn't I? But all of this all starts with one thing. It's the lead generation finding the deals, right? 
you can have the greatest contract in the world, you get the most money in the world, but if you don't have the deals and the opportunities, then the rest doesn't matter. That's why I really, really like fo focusing on that first part, tracking your numbers, focusing on lead generation, talking to 20 people a day minimally, um, talking to you know 100 people a week, you know 80 people a week, um, and then converting from there. For me, when I was just doing sales completely, which I still sell, but not 100%, like I still have other roles and other companies, is my goal is 150 to 200 phone calls a day. I use a sales dialer or I did door knocking um, and had to talk to 25 people a day and I would get five appointments a week. It took me 25 contacts to get one appointment. Then I got down to 15, then I got down to 12 and my numbers adjusted, but I tracked my numbers. It's probably the best things, tips I can give you. And then number two is the lead generation side is you get really good at finding those opportunities and figuring out like what marketplace you want. The marketplace just depends on the person or lifestyle, like stuff closer to your house. And one opportunity might be cash flow or the other opportunity might be like on appreciation. For me, cash flow is important, but I like the other three benefits, appreciation, depreciation, and a tenant paying down the debt and knowing that the tenant is probably a good tenant and not gonna have issues with it. So if you want more information or you wanna hire me or someone else as a business coach to work with you on this journey, reach out and just wanted to share this advice from you because I continue to get these type of questions and wanna do a video on it. All right, it's Jeremy Bowers, 215-370-9107. Just type my name in on YouTube to see all my stuff out there and what I'm doing, how I'm doing differently. I've been buying houses now for over 20 years. All right, take care, bye.